Hello everyone, um, welcome to this final session today. I hope you've all had a good day uh, and managed through the heat and had uh, lots of water. I know I've been drinking lots of water. Um, thank you for joining us here in uh, person and online as well. Um, I'm very honoured to introduce uh, two of my colleagues actually from Arden University. Um, they're going to be talking to you about the digital learning team and the effective model maintenance for distance and blended learning. So uh, if you'd like to give a very big round of applause for Kevin Brace and Angus MacDonald. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, my name is Angus MacDonald. This is Kevin Brace. We're both learning technologists with the digital learning team at Arden University. And yes, we're going to talk today about module maintenance. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about Arden University, the growth in module production, and the development of this project. Uh, we're going to talk about the processes, lessons learned, and how we refine these processes over the last few months. So we'll talk about future developments and progression and reflect on how successful we believe the project has been so far. So a brief introduction to Arden University. Beginning as a producer of distance education courses, Arden was awarded university status in 2015. It has since expanded and grown, and we currently have approximately 20,000 students working on online and blended learning courses, both undergraduate and postgraduate. Over the last year, Arden has continued to grow dramatically, uh, with 130 new modules developed, 183 modules refreshed, and 18 new programmes. Uh, when Arden began, I think there was maybe three or four people developing all of the courses. And as you can see over the last year, you can see the digital learning team has grown considerably with over 30 members of staff. And we've, we're all committed uh, to further development and continual CPD. And you can see over the last 12 months, including CMOLT. Yay! Okay, never mind. So over the last few years, with the expansion of student numbers, the size of the digital learning team, and the amount of new courses being developed, it obviously becomes necessary to take stock, assess, and perform some high-level auditing and housekeeping. Uh, this has led to the development of the module maintenance project. Running across the entire university with a collaboration of all heads of schools and several departments, including quality and library services. The maintenance project has been divided into four specific pathways. The first is refresh, and this deals with small but urgent issues that need fixing quickly, such as changes in laws or policies, uh, amendments to diagrams or images, typos and corrections to content, and updates to links, those kinds of things. Those kinds of things that hamper our students' day-to-day -day, uh, learning. So SMEs can raise a, a ticket for one lesson at a time multiple issues, but one lesson at a time. And this is triaged to a specific team, uh, depending on what the issue is. This part of the process is similar to a help desk scenario, uh, fixing issues as quickly and efficiently as possible. The second pathway is review. Uh, this is for more significant changes that need a longer period of time to implement. Uh, there are three fixed windows throughout the year that SMEs can submit their modules. The third one is renew, and this involves far more changes and significant rewriting of modules, which will require the modules going through revalidation. And the final pathway is retire, which is archiving modules that are no longer running. So currently, we have only put the first two processes into place. Um, Refresh has been running for almost a year now and is something we deal with on a daily basis. Review has been running since the beginning of the year in specific blocks of time and involves a more elaborate process with more extensive communication and collaboration between the digital learning team and the SMEs. To support academics in completing these maintenance tasks, we've created a SharePoint site to promote the service and provide as much information to staff with links to all resources they need. We've created interactive staff guidance on the different stages of maintenance, including a branching activity, uh, which staff can follow uh, to help them decide which of the pathways they need to go, go down. Uh, we've created a how-to video guide 
on how to complete the refresh maintenance form. Uh, and using Power Automate, this form pulls through the information and produces a specific ticket. More on this in a second. Uh, there's also access to uh, the JISC survey form for the review process, which uh, heads of schools are required to complete in far more detail, and heads of schools and module leaders have to carefully review and select which modules and lessons uh, they want to nominate for the process and provide us with very specific details about the amendments required. Sometimes a review request uh, will have amendments that are minor enough to fall under the refresh process, and they will be asked to follow that route instead. And sometimes this can happen vice versa. Uh, we've, had, we've received tickets for refresh that require extensive changes across an entire module, and we will propose that they go for a review instead. And over to Kevin. Thank you. So, um, Leading from the, the last slide, we have uh, a Microsoft form. So we're talking about the refresh process now. So these are small but significant changes we sort of handle on a daily basis and triage off to teams. So you saw on the previous slide, we've got a Microsoft form embedded within SharePoint. And it's really quite a detailed form, which guides the staff, guides the academic staff and the subject matter experts down the route into deciding what sort of content change they want to make, what changes it might be, a uh, reading list, it might be a typo, it might be printable materials, for example. So that form is embedded within SharePoint. They fill out the form, and then through um, Microsoft Power Animate, Automate, sorry, uh, that gets pushed into Kayako. Well, that was our original process. So Kayako was a ticketing system that we used up until the spring of this year. So that was a very simple sort of shared inbox system that we used. So we received an email from the, the Microsoft form with the full details of the form within the um, body of the email. So this is a shared inbox, essentially, with multiple teams across Arden. And we knew that we could do better because we had... Um, simple notes in there, but it was very clunky and we wanted to sort of make it much more intuitive and be able to control the process much better. In addition to the um, Kayako system that we had, the ticketing system that we had, in, in alongside that we ran a spreadsheet and that monitored the tickets that we had coming in. So we sort of mapped and logged all the tickets coming in with the time that we got them, the time they were open to the time they were closed, what particular team, whether it's multimedia or learning design maintenance team, were working on it, or whether it's a library team fixing ebook links. So we had very detailed information on that spreadsheet. So that ran in conjunction with Kayako. So in the spring of this year, we decided we wanted to do much better than that, and we decided to move over to a new system. So the system that we chose, and it seemed to be quite obvious because everybody was involved in using Teams anyway, was Microsoft Planner and using Power Automate as well as the Microsoft form that we saw earlier on. So we already had the Microsoft form, which was very, very detailed. So there was a consistent move from Kayako ticketing system to this Microsoft Planner system. So rather than just take the information out of the Microsoft form and put it directly into the description area. What Power Automate did was to take various aspects of the form and create labels and details within each task. So, so essentially we're using an individual task in Microsoft Planner as a ticket. So when somebody submits the form, when an academic submits the form for these small refresh changes, what it'll take, it'll take aspects of the information they've put in the form and create, say, labels. It will put dates on it. So we've got service level agreements put in there as well. We've got um, information in terms of what type of content, what type of change it is, whether it's content or ebooks or library information or a video. So we've got quite a lot of detailed information within the ticket. You've got, we've got a number of buckets there. There's a, there's a new request received bucket on the left hand side. So that's where we carry out our initial triage process. So we'll check the ticket and see if we've got enough information to then process the ticket on. And essentially, if we haven't, then we'll get back to the academic and say we need more information. But what we'll do at that point is just check the ticket, check the details, 
And if it's okay, then we, it's usually a sign option within Planner to assign it to a particular team and then move it along a bucket to in process. So we've only got about sort of four or five buckets in there and it goes along the process like a normal Kanban board. When one team's working on it, they'll sort of assign it back to us and say, well, I've finished my job. So it might be, for example, the library team would have, would have fixed a link within an HTML module or, or a RISE module, and then it will be passed over to the product developer who has to confirm this or, or rebuild the HTML module. So we have, no, we have multiple teams working on the same ticket in some instances, and it does work very well, and people are able to get in, check the status of the tickets, and they can access the tickets, and, and they can work with them very efficiently and effectively. In addition to that, um, more recently, we've got a Power BI developer, and what he's done is create a, a reporting dashboard, which is the image at the bottom of the screen. So that takes, extracts data from the Kanban board and formats it in that sort of reporting dashboard format where we can basically filter it to a particular week, a month, and we can click on each one of those windows and drill down into get to get more information on the status of a bucket, how many tickets in that bucket, or the, the status of tickets through the system, and if there are any blockers, and if there are any, how many closed tickets. So we're essentially trying to use that um, reporting dashboard to replace the spreadsheet that we're still using to a degree, but I feel that we probably might have them running in tandem. Finally, on that particular page, the Microsoft Teams site, this is all built within a Teams site. So first of all, we built a Teams site, so we've set up a refresh maintenance channel, added the board to it, and we're also using um, the communication aspects within the channel as well. So it's all really self-contained within Microsoft Teams. So in terms of sort of future plans, we've got, um, well, these are current plans as well. We've got super user group meetings that we hold monthly now. We used to hold them more frequently, but we, we've decided recently we only need to hold them monthly, actually. So we're resolving a lot more um, issues and, and things within the actual system itself. So that's working. So we don't need to have these two weekly meetings every, 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 every couple of weeks now. So it's every month. That's working well. We're getting resolving issues, important issues, if they can't be resolved via communication via Teams. We are also um, designing and delivering school roadshows. So that's just to bring um, more attention to this refresh and review processes that we're working on. So that's happening as we speak and we're going into individual schools and walking them through the process and explaining them the difference between refresh and review in, in more detail. And this refresh board has been so the Kanban board and Teams and Power Automate and Power BI have been so successful that we are going to use them for our review process. So the review maintenance process is three times a year, people will submit an entire module with multiple lesson changes. So we're going to be using that Kanban board to control and monitor that process. And in respect of, currently it's an internal team, but we are going to be adding academics temporarily into the Microsoft team so they can have control or they can see where the tickets are and where the, the lessons they're working on are. So that's the new development we are. We've only had a meeting just this week to sort of finalize that process. So in terms of um, what we do, what the reflection on this is, we have a centralized process now, which everybody's buying into. Uh, we've got a whole lot of materials on SharePoint which we're constantly updating and keeping keeping fresh and looking at those and getting feedback from people because we've got comments in SharePoint. We are having so we've got high visibility of all the tickets within the team. So this is what the feedback that we're getting from the multiple teams. So we've got learning designers, we've got multimedia, we've got library people. And they, the feedback that we're getting is really positive from them in terms of using this Kanban board type of system as a ticketing system. We are, um, everybody's, it's very intuitive process and much better than the Kayako system we had previously, which was the whole point. It's self-contained within Microsoft Teams. 
We're using the um, communication channels much more, so we've essentially eliminated e most, if not 99% of all emails. And, um, and it's very positive that the feedback that we're getting from people in, uh, from the, the multiple teams in uh, using Kanban boards and using Teams. And I think that's us, thank you. Any questions, thank you. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I did have a microphone last time, didn't I? But it was a bit of a last minute change to the chairs. So um, I'm just jumping in. Um, but yes, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, it's really interesting to see. And I know that there's been an awful lot of hard work that's gone into what you're doing. Um, I know that we've it's a 15 minute slot and I'm sure that this could have gone on for quite a lot longer. And I know that we could have talked a lot longer. Um, I'm sure if people have got questions, uh, you'd be happy for people to get in touch with you. Mm. Um, and obviously, uh, details are up uh, on the screen, I think, but I think VVox is up at the moment. If people are around and they do want to put anything into VVox, then um, feel free if you are happy to stay a couple of minutes later, but obviously uh, don't feel that you, you have to. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> but I think for now, as it's uh, quarter past five, and for, for everyone that's here, we're going to go off to, to the gala shortly and listen to lots of 90s music. And for those of you that have joined us online, thank you for joining us. Um, make sure you uh, have a good time tonight as well and uh, post your photos on Discord. Even if you're at home, um, get those up on Discord as well. So just one more round of applause to Kevin and Angus as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.